Here you can see we have a box from the Amp Guru. This is the coolest box like I've ever seen, custom box. Amp-Guru.com. You can also check out Amp-Guru.us. He has several different amplifiers listed and they're changing all the time. Check them out and you can even find rare amps like this Phoenix Gold The One. So really cool. Check him out. Amp-Guru.com. He says he's the guru of old school. I don't know about that, but he's definitely the guru of old school amplifiers as far as finding cool ones to sell. So let's very carefully open up this box and see what he sent me. See what is inside. Because I'm curious just as much as you are to know what it is. Now the Amp Guru is in Germany. But I will tell you that I get stuff quicker from him than I do from people shipping me from California. I'm on the East Coast. And the other thing is I've never had to pay any import duty fees or anything. Oh boy. What do we have in here? Ah, uh, yes. I know what that is. I wonder if you know what it is. And this one is the real jewel. But you've got to say the presentation of the box. That is definitely something I'm gonna hold on to. That is a very cool box. Amp Guru. Just, you know, we gotta, we gotta work on this Guru of old school stuff because I think that's kind of me, but uh, we'll let him slide since he sent me some cool stuff. All right, let's move this bigger item off of the table so we can see what's in the smaller package here. As soon as I get rid of my knife, I need it. You big dummy. Now, I don't know much about this brand. I don't know if you guys know. Auto Sound Electronics designed in Germany. This is a Signat Ram 3 Mark II Pure Class A. It looks super cool. Again, I don't know much about these, but all I know is it looks really cool. So if it looks cool, it's gotta be cool. Here's the amp. We think the amp is from around 1998 or so. And here you can see the condition is really, really good. So Amp Guru is able to get his hands on some really nice amplifiers. It reminds me of an old school sound stream or a DLS amplifier or an audio art. Here you can see all the connections are on one side, which is really nice. It has a Tiffany style RCAs for inputs. It has the crossover control 50 to 250 hertz as well as level control 0.2 to 2 volts. Up to 8 gauge for the speaker outputs and then four gauge for the power inputs, and then two 30 amp fuses and a power and protect LED. On the bottom, you can see there's some cooling, allowing the cooling for the uh, amplifier. There's also the switch for the crossover high pass, flat or low pass. And on this side, it looks like it has fans built in, but you'll see later, there are no fans built into this amp. But again, overall, very nice looking amplifier. Let's look at those dimensions. 12 inches by 9 inches. The millimeter equivalents are there as well. And as far as the height goes, 2.5 inches or 63 millimeters. As for the ratings, 150 watts times 2 at 4 ohms, 230 by 2 at 2 ohms, or 450 watts bridged at 4 ohms. You know how we roll though. We don't like to believe the manufacturer. Let's find out ourselves. Now let's fire up the good old SMD, Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno, to do our RMS power output testing of this amplifier. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description for links to Wilson Audio merch, smash me a thumbs up, and subscribe if you like this content. More like it coming all the time. Now let's talk about the Dyno test. There's three different tests, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point. And dynamic is a dynamic tone mimicking IHF 202 standard. Here we're power up the amplifier, turn on the remote lead. You can see it starts off red, fades to green. Green means good, green means go. We have four gauge power and ground. We have 12 gauge for the speakers. And we have it hooked up in the stereo configuration. Both channels are measured here using the amplifier dyno. First off, four ohm stereo rated 150 watts by two, and uh-oh, we lost the footage, big dummy. But we did capture the numbers. We got 159 and 160 certified, 159, 160 uncertified, 184, 171 dynamic. So it's much better, even better than the ratings. Now two ohms rated 230 by two. Here we go, certified first, 1% THD. 239 and 224, so right at the rated power. A little bit under voltage there with 14.3 instead of 14.4. Let's try the uncertified test up to clipping. 
You guys may notice here we get exactly the same numbers uncertified. Some amps just do this, and that's just how they roll. But dynamically, we're going to get some different numbers, so let's check it out here. Again, we're using 1 kilohertz here for these tests. 293, oop, 297, and 285. This is the IHF202 dynamic power at 1 kilohertz. Now, what about that efficiency? It's a Class AB amp, 55%. That's about what we expect. I know it says Class A on the amp, but it's not. Now, let's bridge the amp using the left minus and right plus, which is kind of weird. It's usually the left plus and right minus, but we're going to do it. These tests are going to be at 40 hertz. First off, we're going to start with the 4-ohm test rated 450 watts, certified to 1% THD. There you go. So what we like to see 460 at 14.4, not hugely underrated, but it is accurately rated. And that's all you can ask for. Just tell us the truth. Uncertified up to clipping, it does get a little more, 482 at 14.38. Dynamic, let's see how the dynamic power does. You can see this amplifier does have some headroom built in, which is good. 581, 14.44, so that's nice power. Efficiency-wise, 49%. Again, the Class AB uh, nature of this amplifier is going to not give us really good efficiency. Two ohms, bridge mono, it's not rated to do this, but I did check another website where they tested it and it did survive. We got 531 at 14.43. Okay, I just ran the uncertified test at two ohms mono and we got 580 watts at 14.38, but we popped uh, either one or both of the 30 amp fuses because you can see we pulled over 100 amps of current, so there's only so much that those 30 amp fuses will hold before they pop, which is a good thing. That's what they're there for to protect it. But that's what we got, 580 at 14.38. Now let's try out that dynamic test. Two ohms mono bridged at about 14 and a half volts here. You can see over 800 watts. Again, this amp has got good reserve power built in. Efficiency, don't expect much, and we don't get it. 38% efficient at 2 ohms mono certified. Now, what about the results? I would say rated power for the win. This amp did its rated power right at it at pretty much all the loads, and it handled 2 ohms mono, so that means it can handle 1 ohm stereo, although it's not officially rated for that. Seemed to handle it no problem. Now, let's find out how it sounds hooked up to some speakers. Have this German Signat Ram 3 Mark II. Pure Class A, yeah right, here on the test bench, we're going to listen to a little bit of Luck Witch, we'll see what it sounds like. Let's try a little groove tube from Audio Hertz. All right, the sound quality to me overall was very good. I like that. So let's now find out what's inside and take off the screws off the bottom. There are six screws that hold the bottom plate on. And look at this, man. This amp looks really nice. It reminds me of an audio art amplifier uh, or an old school sound stream, the way that they have the transistors clamped under the bottom of the board. And just the layout's really nice. The board's really shiny. It's, um, it's fancy looking. Now they do say class A on this amp. What this means back in the day is they were class A biased, which means they're high biased, but they are not class A, they're class 
class AB amplifiers. And here is the thermal. You can see the amp didn't get very hot at all. That's the transformers at the top that were really the warmest. And there's a few uh, resistors along the way that are, um, that they're showing a little bit extra heat, but overall the amp did not get that hot. So it performed well. You can see here the amp is designed in Germany, Auto Sound Electronics, and it's approved for Europe and made in Korea. So it was not available here in the US as far as I know. This was only available in Europe, but we did get some over here just to check them out. And again, the fly over here, the amp, very cool. Big shout out to the Amp Guru for sending this over to me. Uh, I bought a few things from him in the past and he's like, hey, you wanna try a couple other amps? I was like, sure. So he sent a couple of these over to me. Make sure you stick around to after the uh, end credits here because we do have another, we'll show you that other amp that I opened up and uh, so show you what it looks like. So again, thanks again for watching. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Thanks for sticking around. Let's check out that other amplifier that was also in that really cool box and see what it's all about. Let's check this other Guru package. See what in the heck this one is. This amp looks kind of long. It's not obvious. <laughs> Does anybody have an idea what this is? Oh, I think I do. Without me opening up and showing you the ends, is, can anybody guess what this amp is? Dude, I bet you haven't seen many of those. All right, friends, do you give up? Do you know what it is? I doubt many people have ever seen one of these. I think it's from the late 80s, possibly right around 1990. It is an audio art, believe it or not. And it is a six channel. The model number is A6004. And I said six channel. I think it's a four channel maybe, because there's only four inputs. Um, but yeah, check that out. No, it is, yeah, front rear audio art. Here's one end of the amp. You can see the LED. We have the front left and right, rear left and right, 12 volt ground and remote. Notice how they're all on these crazy upright terminals. This is definitely one of the earlier generations, probably the first generation audio art. If anybody knows anything about this amp specifically, I'm gonna look it up in my guides and see if it's in there. But I just know that I have not seen many of these. Let's check the other end. So I dug out my old 1989 Car Audio and Electronics directory and found some information on this amp. You can see the audio art here. The A6004 is at the top, $599 back in 1989, which equates to $1,320 in today's money. This was their highest end amplifier. And here's an ad for the amp as well, which is really, really cool. There you can see the model number, the A6004. There's bridgeable buttons there for rear and front, high low adjustment. There's the RCAs. They're just front and rear. Uh, these are high level inputs. Very interesting. Didn't know this amp had high level inputs. Most of the early amplifiers that were uh, high quality did not have high level inputs. It looks like possibly one of the RCAs was changed out, maybe two. Not sure, this amp again is definitely old school. You definitely will not see many of these ever. This is so cool. Amp Guru, shout out. Here's the bottom of the amp you can see Sensitivity adjustment there for one of the two of the four channels. Sensitivity adjustment for the front channels there. And yeah, this thing is pretty big.